So transaminations are actually very, very simple. Basically, it's just the transfer of this amino group into this alpha keto acid and this double bond O into this amino acid. So let me show you really quick. These are oversimplified versions, of course. So all we're doing is transferring. So I just normally write the backbones first, okay? And it's gonna be this amino group right here. We're gonna put it on that alpha keto acid, which the R group is R2, right? And it's gonna be NH3. And this double bond O here is gonna go into the amino acid that has the R group one. So I just kinda do this. And now this is our al new alpha keto acid one and our amino acid two. It's simply that inner conversion of the NH3 and the double bond O. And what happens is we use vitamin B6 B6 to carry that amino group. So we put it on here, first is PLP, then we put it on, so we kind of carry, so that vitamin BC, B6, sorry, kind of carries that amino group, and then it puts it on that second amino acid. So it's not uh, immediate transfer because we're using that cofactor. So now that we know the basic mechanism for transaminases and some basic structures, we can look at a specific example, and this is the alanine, alanine F alpha ketoglutarate transaminase. So here we have alanine with its amino group and alpha ketoglutarate with its carbonyl group or double, double bond O. So like we said before, we are going to be taking this amino group and this double bond O or carbonyl, and we're gonna switch them. So now the alanine backbone is gonna get that double bond O, right? That's gonna become pyruvate. And the alpha ketoglutarate is now gonna get that amino group. And become glutamate. This is why it is important to know some basic structures first so that you can recognize what the backbones become once we switch off the groups. Our next example is the glutamate oxaloacetate transaminase. So here we have our amino acid glutamate. Let's label that glutamate. And over here we have oxaloacetate. Yeah, we know this because it has four carbons, right? And if we switch the groups, so let's put that double bond O on glutamate. Here's our backbone. Double bond O on glutamate. Then it becomes one, two, three, four, five, alpha ketoglutarate. Ketoglutarate. And now let's put this NH3 on oxaloacetate over here. So we know it becomes an amino acid because we're putting, we have this backbone. It has one CH2 and a carboxylic acid group, so we know it's aspartate. 